Hi everybody, welcome to this edition of the SoCal Prep Report. Richard Estrella here, and we're coming to you today from the offices of the CIF Southern Section. Matter of fact, sitting with me is the Commissioner, Mr. Robbie Wygott. Robbie, thank you for joining us. <clears throat> Pleasure. I love Robbie's office. It's, we'll see in a minute. It's busy with all kinds of stuff, but man, we got this nice little corner here and this nice big table, and we're going to be able to talk uh, with the Commissioner today. Uh, Commissioner Wygott, first of all, congratulations. Great season last year. Didn't see a lot of hiccups. Uh, it was a great year. We're uh, very happy about that. And then the, the task is to keep building on it. The challenge is to keep making it better, and that's what we're going to do. Now let's pick up where we left off. <clears throat> Pardon me. Last year, uh, your playoff system, i got to tell you, and we were talking earlier, and we are talking with Tom Simmons over there, about what a, you know, what an idea. Uh, the playoff system you guys have put together for, for last year, and I believe it before, was just amazing because you've taken people out of their comfort zones. We're seeing teams we normally would never see play each other, and they're good ball clubs because we're in the playoffs. So the way it's been structured, in my opinion, made it a lot more entertaining, uh, a lot more competitive, and we are finding out what we were always wondering. How good are the teams from some of these outlying areas versus the teams here in the suburbs or in the city? So what can you tell us about how that came about and man, what a success it was in my opinion. Well, I appreciate your kind words. You know, it was just something that we looked, there had to be a better way. There had to be a better system than what we had. The idea was that schools should be evaluated for how good they are, or maybe now how not good they are. Right. How large you are, small you are, public, private, charter, None of that socioeconomic status, none of that should matter. It's how good are you? It's about competition. So uh, we took some time to really work on it and try to get uh, use the uh, technology and data available so that we could do you know, actual power rankings of schools and, and really evaluate their strength of program. And once we did that, then the, the task was to group them together in, in divisions where they can compete. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean everybody's gonna win, but they can compete and have a chance. And so what we've seen, and it's, it's what we expected, but it's nice to see it uh, play out. We have had closer games. We've had more competitive games, especially the earlier rounds where sometimes, you know, the scores could get oh, out I of know. hand. We're getting new teams an opportunity that have never had the opportunity to advance in the playoffs and even, you know, compete and win championships. So we're very happy with it. Uh, but we're just getting started. It's been two years. We head for year three, and we look to continue to, to, to see that progress going forward. Well, the competitive balance uh, I noticed in the playoffs was unmatched. In, in, the, in the 30 years we've been covering uh, Southern Section, I've yet to see opening round playoffs as exciting and, and competitive as you mentioned. Uh, there weren't a lot of blowouts. You typically get that in the playoffs when you're in your, in your divisions because it's pretty much the same stuff, uh, you know, best against the worst. Uh, in this case, nobody knows. It was unknown. <laughs> nobody really knows how good those schools out of their comfort zone or what they're usually seeing were. And I don't know if it has a, if it, if it has a lot to do with maybe they're not used to what, seeing those offenses, not knowing how to defend them or, 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 or you know, go after them. Uh, that might be might be part of the deal there. It could be, and there's nobody know, studying these guys all year. Not, we don't know. Not as much maybe because they aren't as familiar. They're not locally, you know, teams they they see all the time. But you know, you also have uh, a lot of uh, access to video and mm -hmm. and uh, the ability to see people and, and what they can do. So you know, again, I think it's just something that uh, its time was was coming. You know, we needed to look at something for the future that really gave. Uh, student athletes a chance and that's right. what it really is about so you know again it's, it's been a great start for us and uh, we look forward to it continuing uh, to do better even going forward all right commissioner the, i noticed this year the league's changed a little bit we added the 605 league yeah. actually yeah. uh took some of the suburban league away and different things every every how, you, how often do you do that every two three years do you guys shift leagues a little bit we the balance is every four years okay uh, we do it in nine areas of our section nine geographic areas so you referenced one area it's called the foothill area where the suburban league is and, and some other san gabriel valley league and some others in the area um, there are a, a few areas of the nine that actually do it every two years okay orange county's doing it every two years the inland empire was the first ones to do it every two years but releaguing is up to the schools involved in those areas they form the leagues uh, they look at geography, they look at competitive equity, they look at school size, they look at all those factors and try to form leagues for all sports that work best for them. And uh, that's a tough process because oh, yeah. it's, it's not always going to meet everyone's needs. There's going to be some issues where, you know, uh, there can be uh, some difficult challenges, but right. um, that's a totally schools-driven process. So we oversee it 
make sure that the bylaws are followed, but in, in the actual input, involvement, creation of leagues, that's all done at the school's level. And if anybody out there think that's easy to do, you out of your mind. I've sat <laughs> in on one of those things, and holy moly, you got guys that want in and you guys that want out. They don't want to stay in that league. They don't want to stay in League A. They want to go to League C, if you know what I mean. So it's it's tough. I understand it. You know, one thing I want to get uh, straight with the, with the fans out there right now is, uh, especially now, um, what you don't understand is Commissioner Wygod does not make the rules. He does not sit here and say, oh, I'm going to do this and we're going to do that. He doesn't sit with his body of people and decide things. It's principle driven. It's school driven. Correct. Correct. You just schools, carry it out. Yeah, I remember schools make the rules, and they do it by leagues. Every league in our section has a vote. Mm -hmm. They can suggest rules changes. They can modify what we have. They can eliminate what we have, uh, and then they vote on what they believe you know should go forward. So, um, you know, it's always been that way. Uh, sometimes people have expectations that myself they or They blame you for everything. Staff, they, well, that's okay. they blame you by name. I they can handle that. I can <laughs> handle that. But they have expectations that I might have a lot more power than I actually have when it comes to making rules and things like that. Right. But that's okay because I think this has to be a cooperative uh, you know, relationship and we have to be there to really support our schools and, and to do uh, what they want us to do. Absolutely. And, and I have no problem with that. But then I also believe we have a responsibility to lead mm -hmm. and to be the leadership of the group, to make suggestions perhaps, to throw out ideas because I think you know, a lot of times they ask us, you know, you're the ones that are here that's every right. day. You know, you're the experts. What is it that you think? And so that's what we're doing now. We've put out a survey of our schools to talk about transfer rules. We're going to be asking them if they think our current transfer rules are okay. Are there changes that we should make? And, and actually, we've given them three options to rank in order of what they think would be good changes, potentially. So as I said, that's, that's the, the way that we see this relationship. You know, we work together. Uh, what we do is important. And we do it, you know, uh, in support of each other. Now, the transfer rules, they change periodically. Um, as you've mentioned, of course, if you move in, you're great. You've got to move sometimes. Sometimes people get jobs across town, as we talked earlier, or you move out of, out of state. But uh, for the most part, I think right now the way things are set, I think they're pretty good. I think they're pretty fair that if, you're gonna, if you do want out of your situation want to go somewhere else, you're allowed to, but it is only fair that there has to be a little penalty. That there has to be. Well, you're right, and, and I think we're a reflection. What happens with CIF uh, is a reflection of society. I mean, right. I think we, we see what happens at the college level with transfers. We mm -hmm. see what happens, um, you know, where, where people are always looking for maybe that next opportunity they believe right. is better. So our rules, again, in place by the membership, what people may not realize, because transfers get a lot of attention, right. uh, we have 400,000 student athletes last year in the southern section. Of that 400,000, approximately 8,000 transferred. So you have 392,000 student athletes who stayed in the schools that they were in, and a small percentage, maybe less than 2%, that actually did transfer. But that being said, that doesn't mean that it doesn't get attention, that people don't believe that that has an effect on, on what we're doing. And uh, that's why we have to continually visit it and look at it and make sure that we're trying to, to have something that, that's uh, workable, tangible, that makes sense uh, and fits uh, the model of education-based athletics. Well, I've noticed a lot less complaints since things have changed a little bit. We'll see how that goes uh, as the season goes along. Let's talk football now, man, because we're in that season, and there's no bigger game this year anywhere than a game involving the Southern Section, Modern Day. Modern Day National Champion last year went 15-0, undeniably the best team in the country. They were so good, their junior quarterback opted out of his senior year with the USC, which is, hey, okay, man, that's fine. I mean, if you're that good, good for you. But you have the big game this year, number one, Modern Day, number two, IMG Academy, IMG Academy, and... Um, let's face it, uh, I mean, this is going to be a really good game. You have some of the best athletes in high school around uh, at that level. Uh, Robbie, it, it's, it's tough, uh, Commissioner, because um, this is the last time we're going to see a game like this, yeah. more than likely. Probably. Um, you know, there's, there's a feeling and statewide, you know, rules change that you're aware of that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we represent education-based athletics. We represent, you know, the comprehensive high school, um, trying to meet the needs of the students in all areas, academically, athletically, socially. You know, and IMG Academy is an example, you know, has another focus, uh, pretty much centered about athletics, if not only about athletics, and that's fine for them. Right. Um, it'll be a great game to see, you know, a school like that where, you know, they have students from all over, uh, all kinds of you know, different states, maybe even a couple from uh, out of, outside the country, 
and then here against Southern California's best and maybe uh, the nation's best. Right. And uh, Modern Day was an incredibly gifted team last year. I don't know what would have happened if JT Daniels came back this year. I, I don't know what that young Wouldn't man be fair. could have accomplished uh, <laughs> because he was so so outstanding last year. Yes, and was. to think that he had another year was just crazy. But, um, you know, I think it'll be a great game. It'll be a real contrast to see how it goes. And, uh, you know, it may be the end of an era in terms of what's going on down so. the road for the future. But, um, you know, I think Knowing Coach Rollinson in modern day, they, they always want to try, you know, against the best. And uh, IMG, you know, in the same way, they have a, probably a harder time trying to find opponents. There yep. aren't a lot of schools that want to play in IMG academies. So, uh, obviously, the two of them, you know, found some common ground and want to go at each other. And, uh, you know, we'll see how it all shakes out. Interesting. What, uh, in case for those of you that do not know, because we have new viewers every year with the incoming freshmen, um, IMG Academy, basically, you live on campus. It's almost like going to a university, if you know what I mean. So uh, they have trouble scheduling the games because they are so talented. I think they have D1 prospects at every position on that team. So uh, the new rule in California is if you, if, if you don't play in your state playoffs, which the, the, Acad the IMG Academy does not play in the Florida playoffs, similar to Finley Prep in, in, in Nevada, Oak Hill Academy <clears throat> in Virginia, um, those schools, you all kind of live there if you're, at, if you're an athlete. You have that option, I guess. So, um, and they don't play in a state playoff because they're not in a league because who wants those teams in your league? If, <laughs> if you've got the local guys going up against an all-star team in the country, it just doesn't bode well. And I think, I, I think that was part of the impetus for the state of California to keep the competitive balance. Like you said, uh, Commissioner, uh, we're academics too. We're not just about the, the southern section. You know, they they got to cover a big cross-section of things so it's not just you know, managing um, athletes, student athletes. That's it. That seems to be the impetus for some of these schools right now. So this game is very big, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, I have not seen IMG Academy live, um, or, you know, seen a lot of their games, but I have seen modern day play, and they're pretty good. Well, they are. And but one of the things that you might, um, you might think about if you're a fan and you're thinking about this game, you know, a team like an IMG, if you're going to play them, you play them early, right? And the reason you want to play them early is there's going to be some, you know, some things you have to overcome to get all your team together and kind of start playing as right. a group. And uh, I'm sure a team like that, with so many new players and the way things go, you know, can be uh, in a situation where the earlier you get them, uh, might be better than than later in the year when they have a few more games under their belt. Right. Um, you know, but Modern Day's had some new new players too, and they they're transitioning. You know, their great quarterback left, and another one transferred in, and you know they have a couple other you know players that have come from other places too. So you know they lost a tremendous amount of players you know uh, in the front, especially their offensive line. So you know they're not the same team they were a year ago. IMG's not the same team they were a year ago, and we're just getting started. You know, Modern Day had a good win uh, the other night. Uh, so we'll see, you know, it, right. it, it's got a couple more weeks to, to build up, but then by the time we get there, I'm sure there'll be a lot of hype for that game. Yeah, it's going to be a good ball game for, for the reasons that, that the commissioner just mentioned. You know, this may be the end of an era, and it's, it's really funny. You know, Rollinson's been at Monterey for a long time, got there in the 90s, won championships. I mean, he was the guy, won a national title, and then here it comes. They stuck with him, and he stuck with it, and, man, they came full circle again. Again, national champions doing the southern section in Southern California, a solid, as they say, uh, by putting together a, a great ball team. Being able to manage all those great athletes is tough. They, they were as good a high school football team as I think we've seen in a long time last year. I mean, they just had that versatility, you know, on both sides of the ball, even special teams. They, they just had that magic group. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to, you still have to coach that group. You know, that group right. doesn't do it without having the right uh, chemistry and having the right coaches and making sure that, you know, the talent they have gets, you know, the opportunity to, to showcase what they have. And, and so, you know, it was just one of those magical years for them, and uh, certainly they made uh, us proud in, in the section. They went on and, and whipped De La Salle pretty good right. up there, which we're always happy to see anybody whip De La Salle. That's fine with us. <laughs> um, from our section, we, we put that feather in our cap, too. So, you know, it was a great year, but like anything else, and, and Coach Rollins would be the first one to tell you, it's right. time to move on, time to go to the next challenge, and, and I think that's what we're looking forward to. Yep, definitely going to be a challenge. Don't forget that game's early on this year, so the, you know, check your schedule, see what you're doing. Not everybody can go, but I'm sure it's going to be on TV nationwide. We'll be on Fox be. Sports West uh, yeah. live television uh, as well, so that feed will be they'll going, all get to see it. That feed will be going everywhere. Yep. 
Now let's talk about the office now of being the commissioner, uh, the challenges, you know, uh, we always look at what, you know, you always try to look at history, so you make those same mistakes and you look at stuff, but you know, you're in a different era now. You can't really, um, you know, uh, for instance, let's talk about E. You know, electronic, electronic data, you know, in the old days we're talking about, you know, uh, we're talking with Tom earlier, he says, man, we wouldn't get a, we wouldn't know about something that happened in a game far away till the next day, till Monday. You know, now you find out things immediate, and I think you have to be like a 24-hour commissioner now because you, they can get to you 24 hours a day. It's changed. They can, and, and it's okay. I mean, I can, I can accept that. Um, I know when I was an athletic director and I used to get in contact with the CIF office, mm -hmm. it wasn't something I could wait three days to hear back. It was right. something I would need an answer for. I'll give you a quick aside. We just hired a, a very bright young lady as our receptionist. And she walked in and she was kind of getting settled in her area. And there was this little machine over here. And she said, what is that? And we said, well, that's a fax machine. <laughs> and and it, at I one time, it. at one time in this office, Rich, we had two fax machines that probably did nothing but were all day long. Right. The stuff that I came remember. in yeah. all day long. Transfer paperwork, league entries, you know, you name it, it was coming in on the fax machine. And you so, can hardly read it. <laughs> so our, our, our new receptionist, who's like I said, very bright young lady, didn't even know what a fax machine wow. was. So if I can describe the changes for us, um, we just have uh, realized that that the communication levels and the abilities and expectations of people have, have done nothing but increase. We've increased, you know, tenfold. We our, our website has become, you know, an, an incredible source for people to come to to get what they need to get. And then we, as I told you a little bit earlier, we, we are really happy and excited. We hired a new digital media coordinator. Her name is Chelsea Hayward. Chelsea's a very bright young lady, very talented. And she's going to take us to the next level because we're going to have the ability to, to really in, in expand our communication efforts through all the social media platforms. We're going to be able to interact with our constituencies and our stakeholders in a much more of a two-way conversation, right. uh, provide information to our schools, provide information to the public, be a source for people who are interested in, in what's happening with CIF Southern Section. So, you know, we're just... Uh, you know, we're like a lot of others with technology in that we want to be at the front of it. We want to be able to keep moving forward and expanding it and getting better at it. And uh, that's really a big goal for us this coming year, but it's a goal for us every year. And it's like everybody else says, you know, the technology, <clears throat> pardon me, changes so rapidly. I mean, what's, what's you know, typical today, trash can tomorrow. It's, it's old news. It's the fax machine. Um, how do you keep up with that? Well, again, you just, you know, our schools are a source of, of a lot of that. We have a lot of people that we are, you know, connected to that are school sites that, uh, that offer up suggestions and say, you know, this is something that we've seen or something that could help us. We have people that we work with, you know, that developed our, our online communication system right. that we call CIFSS Home. So we work with them to adapt some of our procedures and things that we're doing. And, and so as I said, it's, it's, it's an exciting time. Uh, it's, it's a time where you really have to try your best to to be in front of it, keep mm -hmm. up with it. Um, but I think we've been leaders in, in, in a lot of this uh, across the state, right. maybe even across the country. I think our section has shown people you know, a way to do some things and, and they've come to us and asked us how we're doing it. We're proud of that. You know, we want to be leaders out there. We want to have people uh, you know, looking at what we're doing, hopefully in a positive way. So you know, we're just going to keep that going. And, and that's really uh, at the height of of you know each year I develop goals for our section and I develop things that you know we need to, to focus on and the very first one every single year is communication right and what we're doing now and what we can do better uh, going forward what's well, tough man and, and, and a guy like me too in order to innovate you know you, you got to really trust your young folks now because this this electronic stuff all this email all this you know uh, Instagrams and all this other stuff all these platforms that come out that we're using you know, the young folk get it. They yes. understand it. They're all on it. That's right. And uh, that's, that's, right. that's the new customer. And they're the right ones. And that's right. why I said we're so excited to have Chelsea because she's the perfect person for this. Uh, she's, you know, that young, bright, energetic, talented, and she lives it, knows it. You know, I have two daughters, 22 and 20. 
I mean, you know, it, that's what it is. That's that's where the knowledge is. That's yep. where the the real uh, work gets done, so to speak. So for us that are past those those years and those times, it doesn't mean we can't rely on on you know brighter minds than ours right. to to really bring us forward and to make progress and and help us do what we do better. And and so that's that's exciting for us. Now we knew who. Now we know who's running the CIF <laughs> office. His daughters. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Not bad though. Pretty smart. They're girls. doing fine. All right, well, Kirk, we're going to come back with the commissioner. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to leave you now. We're going to take a look at the CIF Southern Section top tens in their respective divisions. We'll be right back with the commissioner here at the CIF Southern Section. What's happening in LA? I'm Arian Alexander. Summer isn't over yet. We've saved some of the big ones for Labor Day weekend for you to get outside and enjoy all that LA has to offer. This Saturday, fans of Stevie Wonder are invited to gather, dance, and sing at Wonderful, a Stevie Wonder celebration. This free event will celebrate the music and impact of R&B icon Stevie Wonder with remixes, covers, and rhythms. Hosted by Brooklyn native DJ Spinna, one of the world's most respected tastemakers, Wonderful is sure to be a fun-filled musical night for all. To RSVP, visit levittlosangeles.org. The Made in LA Festival has all the ingredients for a great summer. Live music, art, good food, and beer. Happening this weekend, the festival features musical performances from Saint Motel, Mondo Cosmo, Dorothy, Uyapongo, and more. Hosted by Golden Road Brewery, it's the perfect place to relax and unwind from the week at this 21 and over event. Ticket sales benefit Art Share LA and get yours at goldenroad.la. It's that time of year again. The LA County Fair is back starting this week and goes on until the end of summer. The Fairplex in Pomona will host your favorite fried foods, rides, and game booths for everyone. Guests can also enjoy musical performances, roadside attractions, and a slew of fair competitions. This is the perfect way to end your summer. For tickets and activities, check out LACountyFair.com. Summer is winding down, but we do live in LA, so may the summer fun never end. Keep it going with What's Happening LA. I'm Erin Alexander, and I'll see you next week. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We're sitting here in the CIF Southern Section offices, uh, talking with the Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Robbie Wygod. And 
Uh, Commissioner, uh, another season coming up of everything, not just football. You know, the whole thing's coming up. It's a new year. Uh, what are some of the things we may be looking for? What's new? What's going on? Well, you know, as I mentioned already, and we had a chance to talk a little bit about expanding our communications with our new digital media coordinator. We uh, talked about transfer rules, that we're right. doing a survey of our schools to find out more feedback on transfer rules, take that discussion statewide, take a look at that. But we have some other things, um, you know, with the, after the competitive playoffs, too. We have a couple other things. We have some new events. Uh, cheer is a new sport in oh, CIF. Right. And so uh, we're going to conduct our first ever cheer championships in January of 2019. So we're going to have four divisions of, of competitive cheer. We're excited to do that. We're going to have a unified sports track and field championship. Right. Not sure if the viewers are all as familiar with unified sports, but that's where you have uh, students with special needs that compete with students that you would call able-bodied students. Right. So that's a good know, idea. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's, a, it's about inclusion, yeah. and, and it's about yeah. you know students working together. And so the, like the Special Olympics that everyone's familiar with. It's for special needs students who compete against fellow special needs students. Unified Sports combines the, the special needs student and the able-bodied student in, in, in a competition that they both participate in. So mm -hmm. we're very excited about that. We're going to have that in May. It's going to be a, a track and field championship in Unified Sports uh, where we'll have some of the, uh, the students from the uh, Unified Sports Championship actually come and, and we'll have some events at our Masters Meet track and field. So we're going to have wow. some of those as well. Um, we're going to make a real effort this year to uh, expand online ticketing. Uh, the process for people to buy tickets for CIF playoff events uh, is sometimes a bit challenging. They have to go to the campus, park their car, find where the student body yep. office is. You know, not it's just kidding. it's just not a, a, an easy thing to do. So we uh, have partnered with GoFan, a, an online ticketing company. We've used their services for some of our championship events, and now. Um, we're going to start really making an effort with our schools to see if we can serve our, our constituents, our stakeholders better uh, by going through uh, some online ticketing uh, stuff. So that's that's coming as well for this year, and, and we're excited to see those things play out. I know a lot of people that are going to be a fan of that ticket thing, I'll tell so. you right now. Uh, I hope so. No doubt about it. Uh, I'm glad to see also cheerleading is coming in because yeah. you know what? They have a national championship here. I mean, think of Gora Hills or something like yeah. that. Or, yeah. You know, they've won like four or five of these things, you yeah. know, and... Uh, it's good to see because let's face it, cheerleading—they're athletes, man. I don't care. Anybody says they're not, it's just stupid. Well, it's what we do. Come on. It's what we do. I mean, we we believe in high school athletics as a classroom, and it's the way that students learn about life. Right. And all the things that come out of, of the experience of high school athletics. And it's not just athletics. It can be music and drama and dance yep. and, and robotics play. and, right. you know, <laughs> e-sports, you name it. It can just mm -hmm. something that gets young people to come together as, as a group to maybe set aside, you know, their race, their religion, mm -hmm. their socioeconomic status, where they're from. Absolutely. You know, people constantly talk about a divided nation and we're in a terrible position where we are divided. We can't get along because of our differences. Right. And my response to that is look at a high school sports team. Look at what a high school sports right. team looks like and look at what they do. You know, students who don't come from the same place maybe aren't the same color, religion, speak the same language, but they find a way to come together, get goals that they can agree on and try to achieve, and they do it working together. Absolutely. And, and that's, you know, it's so much bigger than, than what we do in, in education-based athletics because to me, we're a great example for, for this nation and for our society of what it's really about. And so, you know, when, when we feel, you know, so strongly about what we're doing because, uh, you know, we truly believe that this is the future of, of this nation in showing everyone how you work together and how you come together and how you can get, you know, things accomplished when you when you focus on, on you know, looking at each other, treating each other as brothers and sisters Absolutely. and getting the job done. Well, that's a great uh, way to end this. That's a great message, Commissioner. You're absolutely right. Um, high school sports, again, no pretense, honest effort. Um, everything's done for the love of your, your, your classmate and what you're doing. And uh, once you get out, man, enjoy it now because once you get out, it's all work, man. You've got to work, all right? Maybe so. It's terrible. So just stay a kid as long as you can and enjoy yourself. Actually, just enjoy your experience as long as you can. Uh, Commissioner, I've got to thank you uh, tremendously for coming on the show uh, today. Um, it's always good to talk with you. We're looking forward to a lot of stuff coming up this year. And uh, I wish you nothing but success this year. Thank you, Rich. Pleasure to be with you. Good luck to you and your guys. Thank you. All right. On behalf of all the cast and crew here with the SoCal Prep Report, Richard Stray saying so long. We'll see you next week. Be back live then. <laughs>